Welcome back. My name is Levi from the Isle Revelations or Paper Plane on Discord. And today we're going to go ahead and start up on part three of the Errant Worlds and using the Errant Biome system. And before we go on to that, I was actually talking to the developers and I got some exciting news. Uh, the first one is that if you do go in to get your free trial, which yes, you can get a 30 day free trial on this. So you can try it and see if it works for you. I got to tell you, this is by far the best program for making worlds. So if you want to do just the landscaping or whatever, it's all there for you. And it's easier to use than say Gaia, World Generator, all those kind of things. I have a lot of hours in those. And this is definitely my go-to since I can do it and I can see what it's doing and I can build the worlds to make them look exactly the way that I want without some procedural generation deciding how it should be. So for me, this is definitely the one. Um, if you go over to errantphoton.com, uh, you're going to open up with this first page and you can go ahead and buy now if you'd like, or you can try the free 30 day trial, which is totally awesome because you get to try it and see if you like it or not. If you're going to do that, I would say, go ahead and get the, all three of them. Just try them and see what you like, see what you don't like. If you don't want the paths later, whatever. I mean, since you're going to get a trial on them, you might as well try them all and see what they do. And you can go ahead and fill up all the information here. And then at the end, you're going to get a, how did you hear about us? So if you could, if you would uh, actually mark this one right here, this is paper plane, this would be me. Um, this will just uh, send them a ping as to where they got this from and also get a little bit more uh, feedback from me so I can get more videos and stuff out as well. And see that you guys are actually enjoying these videos and let me keep doing them. <laughs> and also for another really exciting one, I have the new link if you look down in the description. If you are interested in buying, uh, right now, you actually already get a discount. So if you go in and you buy one of these, you'll get them at a standard price. But if you buy all three or two of them, you're going to get discounted for the bundles. And the more you buy, so if you buy all three, you're going to get the full bundle price. If you buy two, you're going to get a little bit uh, lesser bundle price. But there's a new one here. So if you click on it right here, no matter which one you pick, if you use my link, you're also going to get another 10% discount. So that's a thank you for watching my videos. And if you get the bundles, they also stack with the bundles. So right here, you pretty much get paths for free. So definitely check that one out. And if you're doing studio and stuff like that, it still works. So if you guys are watching me and you guys are big guys out there and you got 25 people and you want to do a big uh, production, all those bundles still work and they still help you out. So definitely use that one, man, because I'm happy that I can finally... Uh, Get you guys something there. And we're also still talking about doing a giveaway and everything that's still in the pipeline. Don't worry, we haven't forgot about it. We're just kind of uh, deciding the ins and outs on exactly how we want to do that. Maybe a contest where we can actually see, my, see some of your stuff. Uh, we haven't quite uh, got that all figured out yet, but as soon as it is figured out, we'll de I'll definitely let you know and uh, get that in the pipeline. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and jump out of this and jump back into Unreal. And we can continue off where we left off last time. I'll be right back in a moment. And here we are back where we left off last time. So I did get some of the things fixed uh, that we had issues with last time. I actually had the, um, so if we go into, let me go ahead and close up all this landscape stuff because we don't need to see it. So if we go into our biomes here, uh, we can select all these. Previously, I created the uh, spawners here. Whenever you do spawn in all of your items, you're going to get all these spawners here. And you can control those with the runtime grid, which I made custom with an E. I don't know if you remember that. I do. And uh, then we have the world uh, the world settings here. We actually added the custom grid here. So we have two grids. We have our main grid, which is just the default grid that comes with it. And then we have the custom grid. Whenever I changed all the sizes, I changed them in the main grid. And didn't realize that I was doing that, and that's why I couldn't see. So whenever I jumped into play, so if I Alt S right now to simulate, now you'll be able to see that all of the um, sections are are loaded in. And you can see the entire world. It does take a moment. There is a lot of trees here to count, so the load in does take a minute. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't do this all the time. This is just for you know visual representation. Whenever I'm messing around or just seeing what I want to see for the for the whole of everything. This is just kind of the way I like to do it. So right now you can see we're actually loaded in and we have all of our trees everywhere with no missing areas. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and exit out of here. 
And let's go ahead and get this set up so we can actually start adding the biomes where we want them. So currently we're just using a very basic biome system uh, to place the larger biome sections kind of where we want them, but not really giving it much information as far as exact locations. And if you notice, we actually have all the trees, rocks, and everything on all of the uh, slopes as well, which we're going to go ahead and take care of right now as well. So first thing first, let's go ahead and grab the sky and let's get rid of the clouds. So we'll go into details and we're going to drop, we're going to actually go to no clouds and we're going to drop the cloud coverage to zero. Let's go ahead and drop the fog to zero. Another thing you can do as an easy trick is just grab the sky. So this is if you select the sky, you're going to get the diamond here in the middle, and you can just drop that way down. And then you'll have a nice even tone on everything where you don't have too much fog, kind of making it hard to see things. So now that we got that set up, we can go ahead and start working on our biomes itself. So let's go ahead and I'm going to close all these. And we'll use them as we uh, need to get to them. And we'll go into the errant biomes. And we're going to actually remove all the biomes we have right now because this is not exactly how we want to set up the biomes. Uh, this is a, a good fundamental and you do need to kind of get your biome locations for the dunes and stuff like that. But to actually get detail, we're going to do that a little bit different and we're going to use a little bit of waiting, weight painting for that. So for right now, let's go ahead and get rid of these. So if we go into our tools, we can go ahead and remove all of the biome. Uh, excuse me, we can remove all the foliage. And that's going to take a minute because there's a lot of them. And I did the wrong one. Clear generated content from selected components is the one we want. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and now everything is gone. And we can go back to our setup here. Okay, so a lot of this work we're going to actually be doing in the errant landscapes instead of the biome to add in uh, the functionality for getting our weight paints done kind of procedurally. So let's go ahead and hop into there. I'm going to go into selection really quick and see what I got going on here. Looks like I got something running in the background. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into the uh, errant landscape. And from here, we can actually start uh, adding in the weight points that we want to control all of the foliage that we've added. So, so, so far, we've already added the foliage that we're going to use as our placeholder. So this way, we'll be able to just see everything really quickly. Once we get everything dialed exactly the way we want, then we can go ahead and start replacing those very easily with any sort of foliage that we want or any kind of trees, bushes, anything like that. It's uh, really quite simple. So for right now, we're going to go ahead and start working with the base. So if you remember whenever we first started on video one, adding in this base, the first thing we did was we did an overall, uh, basically a bump map on the whole thing, just to give it a little bit of uh, valleys and stuff here and there, like all of these. And you can see all these little bumps everywhere. So right now they're not very big, but if you actually get down to the size of the level, you'll be able to see how large those actually are. And they're actually quite, quite large. Just to kind of give all the little valleys and bumps and stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and add some stuff to that to give it um, a little bit more weight paint uh, variety so that we can put in the um, trees where we want them to be. So let's go ahead. And that one is... Um, if we go into the landscape and we look up, we can actually find that one. It's right up there. This is our first main one. So we're going to call this one. I already have it uh, named as base height. And we're going to duplicate these. So currently I have uh, both of these duplicated, I do believe. Uh, nope, I do not. Okay, so I only have the one right now. Good. I did go back on it. So we are going to use these for masks for masking out all the other brushes. So since we have a whole bunch of brushes in here, once I add the weight paint on this one, you're gonna see that the weight paint is gonna go over top of a lot of these other ones. So we can go ahead and add in our weight paint now so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So we have our height map right here. 
So if we go into our height map, we can see which height map we're using on this one. And this is important for later because we're going to duplicate this and we're going to remove that. But right now we're just going to make it all on one and then we'll duplicate both and remove what we need. So we have also our weight maps here and this is going to add in the maps that we need. And the one we're going to use right now, I don't really have a whole lot of different types of weight paints uh, in this biome system or this uh, auto material because this is one that I got off of um, the marketplace and it's kind of set with what it is. I'm sure you can add more to them, but we're just going to use what's here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the mud layer because I know that one works really well. And we'll go ahead and call this first one weight map mud. And then we can add, I'm going to actually add layered. And the reason I'm going to add layered is so I can add more than one. Um, uh, if I want to use a splat map or something like that, I can actually mix them together and use multiples. Uh, the first one we're going to use right now is we're going to go ahead and open this up. And this will be the texture that we're going to use to add in that mud texture. But we need to find some that actually work with it. And we already have our Icelandic terrain here. And if we open it up, we can go into the folder where that particular height map is at. And you can see we actually have a whole bunch of different um, textures that we can use. And these are all mass type textures that we can use for adding in uh, different um, weight maps and uh, all kinds of different things for... Um, we have, let's see, the flow maps, which is really cool. We have the deposits, the one I like to use a lot. And the curvature is really good. Uh, we also have, so the curvature you can actually use for mapping out the, um, uh, all of the slopes and stuff if you want to do something very specific there. And for right now, we're going to actually use the deposit map and we're going to drop that in. So let's close our height map and we're going to drop that in here. All right. And there we go. So now you can actually see it and it's a little bit hard to see, uh, just because the weights are so low on these, uh, especially whenever you use the deposit map, they're pretty low but you can actually increase that. One issue that we have right now though, is that when we applied this big one, we actually tiled it four by four. And currently this is actually only tiled one. Since we ha added this in, we didn't add any adjustments or anything of that nature. So we have to go to our sampling and you can see our UV scale here is just set to one. And we actually did a four by four. And once again, we also have the auto wrap border, which is something we'll have to change as well. Cause if we go up, we want to match our height map settings. So if we go in our height map, you can see we have four by four and we're using a mirror so that all of the border edges mirror together so that there's no seam. So I'm going to go ahead and drop these. Let's go ahead and close the height map completely. And we're going to set this to four by four and let that render. And then we'll go ahead and do the mirror. And we'll let that render. And now you can see where we have our splat map or, well, basically this one is pretty much a splat map. And you can see how it kind of follows the curvature of the landscape that we have, that we've put here. And we can actually increase that quite a bit as well. So right now they're all on a very, very low uh, multiplier. So we're not getting a whole lot of um, weight there. We're only getting a very small amount, maybe 0.1 or 0.2 or so. We actually need a little bit more than that. We can also add in more maps in here also to add a little bit more to this. So currently we were using the layered and the layered is very cool because we can actually just go ahead and add a completely other map. Let's close this one back up and now we have a new one and we can go into our texture parameters and we can add another one. So we're going to grab the flow map and we're going to throw the flow map on there. And now you can see how the flow goes with everything. Uh, currently the flow map once again, is doing only one on the whole thing because we have this tiled. So we'll go back into our sampling and we'll go four by four. Go ahead and hit okay on that. And we'll go to mirrored as well. Just like so. And now we have it in all the locations where it's following the curvature that we had on our map. So now we can actually start playing with some fun stuff. So we have uh, the sampling done, if we go into our adjustments, we have some adjustments here we can make in order to bring some of this out and make some of this go a little bit uh, a little bit lighter. So if we don't want stuff there. So currently I'm going to actually bring down on our multiplier, I'm going to bring down the flow map a little bit because I don't really want it as heavy as it was. I actually want 
the deposit map to be the one that is more dominant. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to go ahead into the multiplier on the deposit map and we can actually bring the multiplier up and bring in a lot more of that area. And now you'll see we'll get a lot more that's a lot higher on the multiply. We can also use the contrast levels to make them a lot harder on the edges. And with conjunction on our multiply and our contrast, we can actually control how much deviation we get everywhere. So currently we have, uh, we're going to actually use these ones right now, probably for the forest biomes. Kind of like this, which is perfect. Uh, but I want the forest to be a little bit more broken up than it is right now. And you will also notice that on all of our mountains, we're getting them as well because this particular um, large texture that we used or large height map actually goes over all of the mountains as well. There are ways to get away from that, but the way that I do the style, um, it's a little bit faster for me. So I'll just go ahead and mask all these out when I'm done. And we'll do that here pretty shortly. That's why we're going to dupl duplicate this one, make two of them, and then we'll go ahead and mask that part out. So the first uh, one thing I'm going to do before I do that, let me just go ahead and just do, I'll show you a quickie where we can just add in one more. And this one we're going to do a little bit different. We're going to actually add in a cloud texture to this one. So we'll do clouds. And there's some really cool ones here. We got a pretty good one. Aurora is okay. So this one uh, you should have in UE. Uh, no, this one is with Ultra Dynamic Sky. Uh, generally, you will find some of these. This one is also Ultra Dynamic Sky. This is the one I use the most. So I'm going to go ahead and try this one. And this one is just going to add a lot of patches everywhere. So I want to actually bring those to a bit um, larger. So I'm going to do a four on this one as well. And I'm going to do the mirrored just so they all match up together. And I'm going to go to my adjustments. And we'll do the same thing with the multiplier. I'm going to bring the multiplier up pretty high to like a five. You're going to see everything get filled up. And then we can start bringing in the contrast to make those go exactly where we want them. I might actually bring the multiplier down a bit more. Like so. Perfect. So that actually gives us a pretty good splat map. It's going to have some areas with... Uh, Plenty of uh, forests and stuff like that, but we do have it over all these mountains and everything. That's what we're going to go ahead and take care of right now. So on the next part, we'll see here, I have this one called base height. Uh, this won't be called that on yours if you're following this exactly. This will actually be called um, Icelandic. So this is the Icelandic. Let's go back to the height map. Uh, this is the Icelandic terrain is what it will be called. I just named this height map so I know which one's which. So I'm going to call this one height map and then I'm going to duplicate it. So now we have two and you'll see everything moves a little bit because we actually have the height map on both, which is not what we want yet. And we're going to go ahead and rename this one real quick. And we're just going to call this one. Uh, we'll call this one texture or you can call it weight. You can call it anything that you would like. So on this particular one, what we're going to do is we're going to actually remove the height map from it. So we're not going to use any height map data on this one. And you'll see that it rechanges it back to what it was. Uh, let me go ahead and clear this. So now we have no height map data, but we do have the texture on it. And we're going to do the same thing on the base, except instead of getting rid of the height map, we're going to leave that one. We're going to go ahead and get rid of all of the information here so that now we only have the one. And what we can do there is since this is just a texture, if we were to hide it, you're not losing any information. The only thing that you are losing is going to be the texture information. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like we can't actually hide it. We would have to turn the visibility off here. Mm, that's fine. Doesn't really matter too much. Uh, but in that, we can use the visibility mask. So with the visibility mask, we can paint away all the mountains that we don't want this stuff on and leave it where we do want it, which is fairly simple. So we can go ahead and just add a biome mask. And we will go, um, nope, this is not the one I wanted. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. And 
yes, we are not going to use that one. We're actually going to use the mask here. So that works. So now we have the whole, you're going to see. So now that we're selected on this one, this is the one that's going to be masked. And then we can use our mask here. And right now you have this huge white thing. So this works like any mask. White is going to uh, show and black is going to not show. So if we were to paint it, all of that underneath would go away. But you can also remove this big white border here just so you can see what's underneath. And that one was with the uh, toggle mask preview. That's the one. There we go. I'm not sure why it was that big, though. Hmm. Not a big deal, really. So we can control our brush as well. So we have our standard brush radiuses here. We also have our hardnesses. I'm actually going to go fairly hard with a little bit smaller brush, about like that. That works perfect. And then you can change your value here. So if your value is at one, you can actually use the X button to flip between the two values. Okay. And that way it's like using Photoshop where you're just going from black or white with the X button. So currently we are on a value of one, which is going to paint white. We don't want that. We actually want to paint black. So we're going to push our X button and we can start painting over our mountains. And we just kind of want to skirt the mountain a little bit because we do want the forest here, but we don't want it anywhere near these slopes and stuff. And we don't need it really up in the mountains either. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of all this. And I'm actually going to uh, speed this up real quick and then I'll get back to you guys in a moment. All right, that ought to do it. So uh, that takes care of most of that. And we can add a few more in there. And uh, one of the interesting things that's really great about this uh, setup that we have here is that the devs are very approachable. So you can actually talk to them if you're having issues and stuff like that. And somebody can help you out. And there's also other people on the Discord that can talk to you as well. Or you might even find uh, fixes for an issue you've already had that's already there that somebody else had. But uh, one of them is, so the way that I build my landscapes, um, it's a little bit rougher the way I do it, since I have a very specific way, than what is originally envisioned. But I've already talked to the devs, and they're like, oh no, we're already fixing that problem. So <laughs> we've already seen how you do it, and we're going to go ahead and implement a fix uh so that you can do it the way that you do it. Because they definitely want to make it as approachable for everyone as they possibly can, which is really great. All right, so that's actually going to work perfectly. So now we have all that set up. So now we're going to get our uh, forest here in all these areas. And we can start playing around with the other parts. So currently I'm going to do one other part, uh, which will be this large um, desert area that we're going to set up here. And the reason I'm going to do that uh, is I'm, the rest of them are pretty much identical, exactly the same thing, uh, copy and paste. Uh, but I just want to show one more time so you can get uh, a feel of how I'm doing this. So for right now, we're actually going to find that one. So if we go into our landscape and we can find which one we are building that on. Let's go ahead off of mask. We're going to go to the select. And I believe it is this one. So I have two of them, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, I have the two wild canyons right here. So if I were to move that, and you can always move these anytime that you want and change them however you want. So I'm going to go ahead and back that up real quick. So we're going to do the same thing on these two. Oops. I went and let me go ahead and double click there. I actually went a little too far away. And let me go ahead and control Z that. There we go. All right, perfect. So this one, I actually want to be the desert biome, uh, fully desert, and then this will be fully dunes, which this one I'm going to paint in by hand. And these ones will just be done procedurally, just like we were doing these over here. But this will be mostly just kind of a desert, which we have. So we go into our landscape itself and we go into our paint modes or our paint layers. We do have a gravel one here, which works as the desert very well. We have some also for the riverbeds, which we can use for lakes and stuff of that nature. 
And we're going to go ahead and use the mud layer, as I said, for the... Um, we could actually use... Uh, no, not the grass only. Uh, yes, so we have the sand we're going to use for the dunes, and the gravel we'll use for this one. So let's go ahead and go back into our biomes. Uh, excuse me, we're going to go back into our landscapes, because we're going to find this one again. This was the Wild Canyon, this one. And I think we're just going to use that one. We may use them both. We'll see. So we have, once again, our height map here. This one, I don't think we're going to do a uh, duplicate. I'm not totally sure yet. Let me go ahead and put this one in. And this one is gravel. So we can add in gravel. Let's go ahead and open this up. And once again, if we go into our height map, we can actually find which folder this is in and get the information here that we need. So I am going to do... I'm actually going to do the... I'm going to try the curvature first. Actually, I can try this one and just invert it. So that's probably what we're going to do. Yeah, let's do that. We'll go back into the gravel here, go into our texture, go ahead and drop it in and let that load and you'll see we'll get this. And uh, this one is the curvature, so it's going to do everything except the curved areas or the curvature areas, which I technically don't want, uh, but that will work. We can actually copy this one as well once we get done with it and put it onto our other one. So I'm actually going to duplicate this one. So I have this on single layer. I'm going to go to layered, which is what I should have done at the beginning. Go like this, and we'll go ahead and add this one in. And I actually want everything to be this color. So you could just go and paint it in. I'm just showing you things that you can do just for, uh, just because I can. <laughs> So if I go into this one, I'm going to duplicate this one here. So I'm going to shift on it and I'm going to add it in here. So now we should have two that are identical. And if we go into our uh, adjustments here, we can actually uh, reverse this one. One and we can go to invert, of course. <laughs> so that just fills in the spots that we had uh, those at. So now everything should be set to, um, to the desert style texture. I think if we control shift save it, uh, we may get rid of the grass because we don't want all this nice luscious grass in the desert. Doesn't look right. Awesome. So that gets rid of all of our grass and we can actually do one more time. We're just going to go ahead and grab this one here uh, for the other area where we have uh, this dune area or this desert -y area. And I'm going to duplicate the entire gravel weight map. And let me go ahead and control save that because this could be a bad idea. And we're going to go ahead and click on there, get all those back in. And that worked perfectly. So now we have everything in and we can actually just paint out the edge that we don't want. So now that we have both of these on here like this, we can just go ahead and do our mask just like we did before. Um, for right now, we're actually, if I mask this, we're going to lose the height map. So technically you would want to actually do the, um, the duplicate on these as well for now. So like I said, the errant people, um, uh, I do know that they're actually trying to work on a fix for this for me. Uh, so it would work the way that um, I'm trying to use it opposed to what you would normally do. But uh, I am going to go ahead and do our visibility mask on this. We're doing the Wild Canyon. That's this one on this side, and we have another one on this side. And we can just kind of make a harder brush and paint away what we don't want to be visible. So if you see there, we're actually losing the height detail. All right, you see how it's kind of popping up there because it's trying to flatten it all back out. So we are actually going to have to go ahead. I will have to do that. Let me just go ahead and do these ones. These will be the last two I'm going to do anyway. And this one is going to be base. Whoops. Like so. And then we'll grab this one. And this one will be texture. So this really isn't all that hard. So on our base, all we're going to do is remove all of our texture maps. And we'll get rid of those. Or our weight maps, that is. 
And then on our texture one, oh, you know what I did? I made a mistake. <laughs> Let me go ahead and add those back. Uh, this is going to be base underscore one because this is the one on the right side, and this is base underscore 02. That's where I made a mistake. I've never du duplicated them. So this is base underscore 02. And now we can actually duplicate these, control D. And this one will be the texture underscore 01. And then we will have this one, we'll duplicate it, and we will do the texture 02. All right, great. So now we have the base one, base two, so we can go ahead and remove the weight maps off of both of these. Um, I added a weight map, let's go ahead and delete that one. Let's go to base two, we'll delete that one. And then in the textures, we're just going to delete the height maps. So go into the height maps and go ahead and clear these. And that should get us back to exactly where we were. Just like so. Perfect. So now if we paint on these textured ones, uh, we won't actually lose any more data. So now it's just which one is which. So that is this side here. Yes, perfect. Okay, cool. So now we can go ahead and just grab our mask. Go ahead and get us a nice big brush. And we will start painting out the areas that we don't want any of this at. And we can feather it as well. But for right now, I'm just going to do a rough outline. Like so. And you'll see that we're not losing the area there. Uh, we did lose a little bit here because i got to paint it back. So that was the Canyon 02. We'll go back into our mask. We'll go X. And let's go ahead and paint all that back in. All right, let's go back into our Wild Canyon 02 there. Go ahead and get rid of everything that we don't want to be this brown color. And of course, we can make our brush a little bigger. Oops. I used the wrong brush. Go X. And let's go ahead and get out of here. And we can feather in these, which we are going to do once we get to that point. Let's go ahead up here like so. Get all this in. So that takes care of pretty much what we need on this brush. So this brush does go a little bit further down this way. So we do want to get that one as well. But we're not going to see much until we get to our other texture here. And from here, we can see where that line starts. And we can start building across here and take everything off of these mountains. Just like so. All right, so those ones there are actually on the texture 02. There we go. Perfect. So now we can actually go back in and we can get that soft brush again that we had and we can go with a larger brush size and you can actually feather in. Whoops, that's the wrong direction. Uh, let's go ahead and X and you can feather in a little bit on the edges just to not have that really hard uh, edge there. Kind of like that. That'll give you a little bit of a fall off. And we can do the same thing with this one and we'll just follow this around a little bit like this just to add that back in a little bit. So now you can see there's a little bit of a transition there. That is perfect. You can actually bring down uh, the value as well. So if we go on to the X, which is the black side, we bring down our value a bit, we can further emphasize that edge to get a little bit more of a fade there which is perfectly fine for us. And we'll just bring it in a little bit on some of these mountains over here. Perfect. So now we have our deserty area. 
And once you have some fog in here, it looks really great. So now we can go ahead and set back and start doing our... Um, so this is the dune area. We're going to add the sandy area into the dune area. I'll go ahead and do all that off screen uh, so you don't have to watch all that. All right, so there we go. That'll work for us. So now we have our sandy area. Let's go ahead and save everything. And this will just give us a better representation of our whole uh, map setup. So now we can actually start working on the biomes itself and getting them set up a little bit differently and working a little bit better with what we have here. So now that we have these new weight paints, we still have the um, areas where we're going to have uh, the forest. Uh, so if we go back into our biome system, you still see we have these foresty setups here, but we can also use those elsewhere. We don't necessarily just have to have them there. I just want to make sure that those are very dense. That's why I painted those in with the forest one. Then we also have, of course, the sandy area and our deserty area. So let's go ahead back in and we're going to start with our grasslands. So for right now, we're going to do uh, the, gra the grassland here. Go ahead and open that up. And we have our grassland rocks and we have our grassland trees. And we're going to set our masks. So for right now, if we generate this area, and we'll go ahead and do that really quickly so we can see all the changes that are being made. Let's go ahead and select. And we'll get the uh, selection tool. We'll go ahead and grab something like this. And maybe this one too. So you can see where it's going to generate everything. And we also have a little bit on this um, hill back here. Let's go ahead and grab that one full. And let's go ahead and generate it. Shouldn't take too long for this. And you can see where we have everything going in. So this right here is actually our forest biome, which is perfect. And then we have our grassland biome. And you can see that it's just climbing right up this hill here. Let's go back into the select so you can see what it's doing there on all these. And we can actually mask everything out. So currently it's just on everything. But we don't want these type of trees to be on the mud layer. Instead, we actually want these trees to be on the mud layer. So right now we're going to go ahead and take care of that. And the way we take care of that is in our grassland rocks. And in our grassland trees, we have a mask here. So this is our growth mask. And inside our growth mask, we can actually set uh, parameters for where we want everything to build. And when we open it up, it's going to look just like this. And this is what you will probably get when you first start in. So this is just a um, noise system that allows it to have random uh, noise or to spread it around so it's not all like on a grid. And you can change the parameters here and give more scale to have more noise and your minimum maximum values so that you can actually see it directly onto a grid. So um, uh, yeah, there is that for helping out. And we are going to use this and we're going to bring this into the other functions. But if we go into the grass rocks, I think this one may already have some information in it. Let me go ahead and open it up. So we already have some stuff here that I've already previously built. And once you build one, they're going to use the ones that you have and it'll actually save this information. So whenever you go on to the next one, it'll have this information in there for you. Uh, depending on the biome type, I believe. So if it's like a a grass biome type, then you'll have the grass ones that you had on. If it's a forest biome type, it'll have the forest ones. Um, and here we can actually set where we are growing all of our grass. So we have our nodes here. So these are the biome weight, pa uh, weight map samples. So we're going to go ahead and build this off of the other one that we just had. So we have our biome weight mass samples and we can go in here and we can add the biome, um, so let's do a sample. And we will see the biome weight mass sample. It's way up on the top. Uh, weight mask, ah, where are we? There we go, weight map sample there. And this one we're going to call grass lands. 
Um, no, it's just grass, I believe. So this has to be whatever the uh, name is that your weight is. So if we go back into our map and we go into our landscape, so our weight is grass. That's the one that we're using for the green. And then we have mud is the other one. So we'll go back into here. Uh, that's the wrong one. Go back into this one. So we have the grass here. Oh, it looks like I already had some back here. That's perfect. So we have our grass here, and then we can pull off and add an if node. And then in the if, we are going to specify some parameters. So I'm just going to grab these two over here. And we are going to put these oops, onto the A and the AB. So basically, these are just going to sample the weight mounts and what is in between the weight amounts as to whether it will have or will not have. So the way these are working, we have these two here. The top one here on the B amount is going to be the maximum amount that you're going to have. So anything above that is going to get the foliage and everything from there to zero is not going to get anything. So you want to set these up. Uh, generally, you can just start them off at a 0.5 until you get used to how they work. And the plugin is just A and B, so A and AB. And then we'll use the values to specify how much of the weight it needs to grow on. And once we get done with that, we can go ahead and put everything together. We can use max nodes. And like on the other one, we are using a lot of ads. So ads will add to it. And then you can also use multiplies. Uh, generally, if I'm doing a bunch of them together, I use an ad. You can also use a max. Uh, in this instance, we will do the max setup. So if we duplicate this whole thing and we put here, we can actually add this to grow also into our forest area. But we don't want to do that. We actually want to make sure that this only grows in the grass area. So let's go ahead and connect that. So right now we can actually connect it directly in without using this. And go ahead and apply that. Go back into our map and we'll go back into the here on biomes and regenerate everything. And now you're going to see that we only have it growing where we have the grass weight. Currently, the rocks is everywhere because we haven't added anything to those yet. And we can also set these ones to work here as well. So let's go ahead and get that set up. All right, so this is a one, one, one. All right, so we have our grass node here. Um, so if you'll notice right here, right now, they're kind of all uh, bunched together and there's not as much random deviation as I'd like to see. And that's where we use the noise. So we have this noise here that we can also use. And these two connected together, we'll just go ahead and grab this multiply here and we'll go ahead and control D that one. And we'll put these two together and that will just give it a little bit more of the randomization. And that'll spread it out a little more. Very, very nice. And we can change that value with the noise scale value. Uh, you can actually increase that higher to say, whoops, let's go to say two. And that will actually increase the, whoops, that's not the one I wanted. We'll go ahead and generate that. And that will actually increase the... Um, oh, it's not going to because I have a max of... One. Yeah, so let's just leave that for there for right this moment. That's perfect. So you can actually increase the scale on that just by adding more to them and changing your max values get a little bit uh, different look generally or, or not <laughs> all right so that's all set up there so basically uh, we're going to do the same thing on all of them to get this uh, functionality here 
And one thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and let's cancel that one really quickly. Let's go ahead and get this one. So we have the forest as well. So if we go back into our grass tree, grassland rocks, we go back into this grassland biome here. Uh, we have the grassland sub biome, but I also want some forest in here as well. So I already know that I have a forest sub biome that we created as well that we can also use. And we can hop into that one. We have the same trees that we added earlier. And we can go into our forest tree growth mask and we can do the same things. But what we're going to do here is we're going to move these. And I haven't talked about this one yet. But we're going to do that one next. Don't worry. Is we're going to grab our mud one. We're just going to copy this one since we already know how to make this. So it's just the same thing. Five to zero using the same if node to get the weight amount that we want to add it to. And then we're going to multiply. Whoops. We're going to go ahead and multiply these two together. Like so. And this one actually needs a saturate node. Just like so. And that's why it wasn't at, that was, that's why the scales weren't changing either. I forgot the saturate nodes there and it maxes out at one. So you can't add more than that. And now that we have this one set on mud and we have the grasslands added into the biome that we created here. So now we have both. We're going to have the forest in the uh, muddy areas where we want it. And we'll have the grass in the grassland areas where we want it. And we can go ahead and re-simulate that. And now you'll see that we're going to get it broken up the way that we want it to be. This is absolutely exactly what I wanted. Uh, we can also do the same thing with the rocks. I'm not going to go and do that right this moment. So this is just kind of a uh, show through on how all of this goes together. Uh, we also have one other setup that we can do, uh, and that is going to be so currently right now we're not we're losing uh, this one here. So we had a big foresty area here, and that's because I duplicated or I didn't duplicate. That's the problem. I didn't duplicate our gla grassland um, forest biome that we had and I added that mass to it so it's adding the mass to all of them uh, technically we don't actually want to do that if we're going to add uh, that big area there we would actually make a copy of the other one so if I, I let's let's just go ahead and do that so I'm gonna I'm going to not delete this one I'm going to just move let's go ahead and Let's open this up. Yeah, that's fine. We'll do this one and we're going to control D it. And this will be the forest sub biome forest underscore grasslands sub biome. So this will be the one that we're going to use here for this one. And we'll go ahead and add that one in. And then if we go back into our forest here, we'll use just the forest sub biome. We'll go ahead and open that up, open that one up, and we will do the growth mask, which this is completely not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm, I'm thinking faster than I can work here. That's not actually the one that we want. Let's go ahead and yes, that. that's fine. Let's go ahead and back a little bit to get all the supplied. Go back to our grassland. So what I wanted to do is change out the forest grassland sub biome so we don't actually need it there what we need it is here so that's the one that i changed out i'm sorry that's my fault let me go ahead and delete that we don't need that one we need to go in here and we need to add the forest trees to here uh, let me not do that and let me go to add a new one and this one was the forest trees which was this one which has the mass that we just created. This is the one we want to duplicate. All right, perfect. So that was where I made my mistake. Uh, if we go back into the forest trees biomes here, we can open this one up. We're going to make a duplicate of this. Control D to make a duplicate. This one is going to be forest trees underscore grasslands. And this is the one that we're going to use here because we're going to change the mass to have this parameter here with the mud, which is perfect. And then we're going to go back into our forest, uh, which was, this is the forest trees original. 
And we're going to actually remove that because we don't want this one to be affected by that. We want this one to stay so that it will go, it will cover everything that has the forest main biome, which is the one that we created with the uh, mask. This one here. So let's go ahead and set that one again. Let's make sure that's working. There we go. Now we got our forest back. I'm happy. <laughs> a little bit of a workaround, but there it goes. So now that we have these all set up, we can also do the same thing with the rocks and set the rocks in to work the way that we want uh, to get a little bit more deviation on everything. And the last thing I'm going to go through right now on the next one, we'll actually really go through with the rocks and everything and set those up a little bit more as well. And we'll start getting into setting up the trees and putting in the new uh, tree types or tree species that we actually want to use for the game. But for right now, the last one we're going to do, let's go ahead and take care of the slope system that we have here. So we have one and we actually have it here already set up so you can change how the slope works. We're going to go ahead and build one straight off of this and we're going to use our multiply because we are going to multiply off of the A on this one and we're going to add our slope node directly into here and we need to control the slope uh, max and the slope minimum so we're going to go ahead and hold one and create two new variables here uh, these are just single floats and now we need to so we're going to use the lower values as if you see these ones we have pretty low values but these are subject to whatever type of landscape that you have and that you want to be affected so I'm going to start with the values we have here. So we do have a 0.1 on our minimum and a 0.15. That's just going to give it a really sharp uh, edge and not much fall off on the slope itself. So it's going to kind of cut a knife, a, a knife edge almost, which uh, works for this particular uh, style of game we're doing. But if you wanted something with a little bit more fall off, then you can obviously increase these a bit to kind of get a little bit more of a fade. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that that is working. So that is on the grassland. We're going to go ahead back into uh, that was on the forest trees. We're going to duplicate all of this. And we'll go back into the forest. Uh, this is just the regular tree, I believe. Forest grassland, grassland trees. Let me open this one. Here's the grassland trees. Whoops, wrong one that we had a minute ago. And we'll go ahead and copy and paste this here. And this one goes into A. And this one goes into A. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and apply. And now if we go ahead and generate, uh, we are generating it backwards. Mm, I did make a mistake there, so this is B, this is A, and let's do the other one, B, A, mm, what did that do? Saturate 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.1. Oh, yes, that's why. I I actually did that. <laughs> so uh yeah, we have to actually put it over here because we have to run also this one. Yes. So this is our A. This one is our B. This is our A. Plug this one into the missive color. And we shall do the same thing here. Let's go ahead and remove that one. Get rid of that one. And we'll plug you into... No. Yes, you are going to go into A. You're going to go into B. You're going to go into missive. And you are going to go into A. There we go. Go ahead and plug that. Whoops, that's the wrong button. Go ahead and push play there. And see what we get. 
so it is completely inverting on me. And I had already done this a couple of times. Why? This is grasslands, trees. Why are you inverting? Um, I guess this one actually has to be, let's see if this is one and this is, oops, this is point one and this is point one five. Hmm. There we go. Yeah, I'm not totally sure why it is like that. I was actually using it the other way around the other day uh, when I was talking with the devs. And uh, these were on the bottom, but it doesn't seem to change anything. Or does it? Am I completely out of my mind? No, it doesn't. Well, regardless, that still works. And we need to do the same thing on the grasslands here. We can go ahead and just uh, invert these for right now. Which is fine. And that is in there like so. And we'll go ahead and open this up and push generate just to make sure that, whoops. Uh, which one did I do here? Oh, yes, I inverted the wrong one. This was right to begin with. Um, not sure why I changed that one. I gotta do this on the forest. So yes, this one is the one. So we need this on the bottom. This one on the top, like so. And that's there like that. Put apply, go to our map, and go ahead and hit it there. And that should give us everything that we need. So we have all of our um, setups here. I'm gonna go ahead and run out uh, all of this for right now. Uh, the next time we come back, we're gonna finish up this part here because we're gonna add some different um, items here, cacti, stuff like that. And we have some cool stuff for the desert as well, uh, some bones and things of that nature. Um, actually, I think the desert is way too big, or not the desert, but the dunes, because uh, the dunes are, yeah, they're huge. Very, very large, but they do look pretty cool. So yeah, we'll probably bring down the scale on those a little bit, because they're a bit, a bit tall. And we'll add some stuff in there for them. So that's very cool. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just run out everything and uh, get my final shot for this video. And then we will uh, head up next time. We'll actually go into a little bit more depth. Uh, I'll go ahead and do these rocks off screen and then I will come back and tell you what I did with the rocks and uh, how I put them where I wanted them to be. And I may actually do a little bit of work on the uh, slopes themselves. And then we'll go through and finish up those ones over there and start adding in the foliage that we actually want uh, to have for the game that we're doing uh, instead of these um, placeholders that we have here currently. Uh, and at that point, we'll actually kind of change a little bit how we're showing the whole thing. Because right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spawn everything right again so that you can see everything all at once. And uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and select. And we'll clear that selection. We'll do all. And this is going to take a moment. So I will get back to you in just a moment. All right, and that looks like that is done. I'm going to go ahead and get all of my biomes. Well, I'm going to let Unreal do its thing. And then I'm going to get all of my biome spawners here. And I'm going to add them into the custom. Which is going to take a moment. All right, and it looks like that's done. Uh, let's go ahead and pop out into... Our selection mode and let's get rid of all those so we can see all these glorious trees and you can see now we have a lot more diversity of forest area and woodland area and we can also use um so you can actually set up uh, another weight paint to remove the foliage in certain spots to have like big open areas and you could also use the foliage landscape here and go into, in this particular instance, this one has grass dry only or grass only, and paint that in and you're only going to get grass there. And it's a different weight, so those won't grow under it. 
Um, so actually, I'm going to do a little spot here. Whoops, that's the wrong one. I don't want that one. Uh, let's do the grass only, and we're going to paint here, and we're just going to get a little bit of grass only in a couple spots, so you can do that as well. And then we'll go back really quick, and I'll very quickly go ahead and regenerate everything, and we shouldn't see any trees there. And there we go. Now you can actually see all those spots that I painted in with that uh, other weight paint. And since it's a different weight paint, it won't spawn any of the plants that we had. So uh, that is definitely a handy little tool. And if we hop down in here, you can see exactly what we have going on. And we have a lot of trees to load, so it will take a moment. So there we go. Now we got some nice little um, uh, meadow type areas. And we can deal with these bushes and everything here shortly as well. Um, that should do it. All right. So I'm actually going to go ahead and call this one right now. I'm going to uh, jump out and set up for my, uh, my new thumbnail for the video, which will be the one that you're going to see. And I'll go through just making that up real quick, uh, just so you can see what we're doing. And we'll go ahead and zero this back out. And we'll bring it down a little bit. So we're not going to mess that too much yet, because we're actually going to get the clouds in there. And then that'll give us a better indication of where we're going to put the, uh, the fog. So if we go in here, we're going to do our volumetric clouds, because they're awesome. And we'll set our clouds back to one, and set our fog back to two. And now we can see the height. I actually want to just drop the clouds so they're actually into the uh, so they're into the mountains a little bit. Very cool. Now we gotta just find us a cool spot. Let's go ahead and try pretty cool valley there, but I think we can get a better valley right. Probably. Uh, yeah, probably right about here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that and see what we get. There we go. Let's go over here real quick. Oh, yeah. There we go. Like this. So he's looking out over the mountain in awe. This is the first time you come out of the cave and you see the landscape before you. Very cool. Let's go ahead and F11 that. And we'll go ahead and... Take our screenshot. Very cool. Take more than one. And that should do it. Um, so the next time we'll actually go a little bit deeper and we'll start adding in the actual trees we're going to use instead of these. And we'll start culling them out a little bit because right now it's starting already to get a little bit heavy. We got a lot of stuff in here and this is a very large world and it's loading everything. Uh, so when we do come back and I don't even know if these are actually set on Nanite either. So when we come back in, we'll start messing with the new trees. We have world uh, world position offset on those. So those are definitely going to be a little bit heavier. And we'll go through just culling them out a little bit so we can get as many as we can see and get the view looking really good, but without completely destroying our frame, frame rate. So for now, I'm going to call this one. And uh, I thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to try this. It's completely free for 30 days. It's definitely worth the try. Definitely one of the best, in my opinions, for doing the landscape. And uh, with that, I'm going to leave you guys and I'll see you on the next one.